Hey, welcome, I'm Johnny, and today I'm gonna show you how to deploy a simple Node app on Heroku. So my app over here is really simple. It's a chat app that uh, runs on Node and Express and WebSockets and a really simple HTML page with some jQuery in a file. And all it really does is allow me to send messages to myself. And I'm gonna deploy this app to Heroku so that instead of having it local, locally run here on my local host, I can have it run on a link that I can send to my friends. So the first thing I wanna do is go to heroku.com. And all you need to do is create an account. You can just click sign up for free, enter your information, and for primary development language, choose Node.js because that's what we'll be using. But really you can change that later, so don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna skip this because I already have an account, but once you have um, filled in your information, you're gonna get an email for you to confirm your email ad address and then you'll be set up. It shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. And then once you've done that, you can come back and log in. Once you've logged in, go to the top right corner of your dashboard to this button that says new. And that's what's going to allow you to create a new app. So I'm gonna create a new app and I'm gonna call it, I call it whatever you want really. Something that's relevant and it'll tell you if the name is taken or not. So I'm gonna call mine chat app JK, create it. And then once you're in the dashboard, the next thing you wanna do is get the Heroku CLI. And you can find that in this link right over here. I'm going to click that and it's going to give me the links for the different uh, downloads depending on whatever OS I'm on. So the simplest way is just to download the installer. I'm going to download it and once it's downloaded, I'm going to click it and open it. It's going to look a little something like this. I'm not going to go through the steps because uh, I already have that one on my computer as well, but it shouldn't take too long. Once you have the CLI downloaded, you should be able to access your Heroku account through the terminal. So I have here in my VS Code my integrated terminal, and I'm going to type in Heroku login. It's going to ask me for my information, and I'm going to type in Johnny K underscore 78. Oh. Cool, and it'll say logged in as johnnyk underscore 78 at hotmail.com. So it's successful. But that doesn't mean that we've connected the app to our Heroku yet, to our um, actual repository yet. First thing you wanna do is make sure that your app is initialized as a Git repository. And just to make sure it is, you can check Git status. And here I can see the status of my repository. If it isn't, you can always just do git init git init to make sure that your um, folder is now a git repository. And as we can see from the instructions, the next step after that will be to connect that repository to the app that you have on Heroku. So if we go back to the page here, it tells us to run this command here. So we can just copy and paste it. Let's go back to our code. And this command here is going to set our repositories remote as the repository that Heroku has um, in its services. So it's gonna do git remote and then a, which is add, and chat app JK, which is the name of our app on Heroku. Once we run that, it'll say set git remote Heroku to, and this is a link to the repository that Heroku is using. All right, once you've done that, you can stage your files for commit, make a commit with a commit message and then push it to master. So why don't we do that uh, by going back and we'll do git add and then we'll do git commit m ready for Heroku. Every time you make a commit, you gotta add a commit message so that in your records, um, your repository has a reference of what was done at that time. Then I can type in git push Heroku master 
And what that's doing is pushing all these files to the master branch of the repository that Heroku has access to. And now our app is online, but it's not working yet. And as a matter of fact, if we go on the top right corner to open app, we're going to see application error. And the reason why the app isn't working yet is because Heroku doesn't really know uh, how to run the app. And to give it instructions, we need to create something called a proc file. All right, so I'm going to create a proc file. This proc file allows you to give instructions to Heroku for how to run your app. So here, when we're running it on localhost, we did it by running the command node index.js. And we want Heroku to do the same thing on the web. So we're going to say web and node index.js. So now Heroku is going to run your app the same way that you run yours locally. Now it's still not going to work because when we're running our app locally, we could specify the port that we wanted our server to listen to as we did here with port 5000. But on Heroku, you can't do that. Your server has to listen to the port number that Heroku gives it. And that port number will be available through a variable called process.env for environment dot port. So with this expression here, we're saying we want our port number to be whatever Heroku gives us through this process.env.port. And if it's not available, which will be the case if our app is running locally, then we just want to use 5000. So once, we, so once we've made that change, we can just commit them after staging the files. Then push it to Heroku with the same command, git push Heroku master. And once that's done, you can see your app being built. And once it's all done, you can go back to your app, refresh it, and it should be working fine. And just like that, you've deployed your first app. As you can see, it was pretty straightforward. It gets more complicated, of course, as you start building more complex apps with things like databases. But Heroku is very, very well documented, so you'll find a lot of good information on their website. And, of course, there are a lot of tutorials out there just like this one uh, that go more in-depth into what you'll need to do when you start building those bigger apps that involve more configuration. But I'll leave it at that. Please let me know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.